people can be defined as a psychopath. So that means you've probably met one. You may even know one. Hell, you may even have a psychopath in the family. So what if you have a potential psychopath child? Very challenging for their parents, very challenging in that we love to think that our children are going to be caring, empathic people. And is being a psychopath all bad? It's scary, murky research, but let's take a deep breath and confront the mind of the functional psychopath. And how appropriate to start near the old haunts of Jack the Ripper, where I'm meeting forensic psychologist and author, Dr Kevin Dutton. So you have a psychopath test with you? I do, yeah. It's uh, called the Psychopathic Personality yeah. Inventory, the PPI. And what this test is looking at, we're picking up um, characteristics like fearlessness, yeah. ruthlessness, social dominance, charisma, tough-mindedness, those kinds of things, impulsivity. Um, so let's see how you get right. on. OK, um, I've never cared about society's values of right and wrong. Is that false? Mostly false, mostly true or true? False. False, OK. Um, I don't let everyday hassles get on my nerves. False. <laughs> false. And how about, uh, if I want to, I can get people to do what I want without them ever knowing? Uh, no, I don't have that skill. They know. <laughs> well, you know what I can honestly say? You are a very bad psychopath. <laughs> this is just a small subsection of the 150 question standard PPI. And despite common perceptions, violence is not one of the defining features of a psychopath. Of course, if you combine violence and psychopathy, well, the outcome is chilling. But that's not the case for many who classify as psychopathic. Well, you've met a number of psychopaths, you've tested them. You admire them, don't you? I do, to some extent. I think that there are certain contexts uh, in life um, where being a psychopath can predispose you to great success. I've interviewed uh, psychopathic special forces soldiers, psychopathic surgeons. I've also interviewed a top barrister, and he proved very high on the psychopathic spectrum. Now, he can cross-examine an alleged rape victim, for instance, and literally destroy that person's life. But at the end of the day, he can go out for dinner with his wife and not give it a second thought. I'd hate to be married to him, though. And it does make you wonder what they were like when they were kids. Back here in Sydney is someone who knows. Now, no psychologist will label a child a psychopath. That's because it's still potential at that stage. What they say instead is that they score highly on callous, unemotional traits. Professor Mark Dads has helped develop powerful training programs to help kids with conduct disorders, 10% of whom score high on callous, unemotional traits. All children make mistakes. They have times when they're aggressive and they lie and they manipulate. It's just part of human nature. But the thing about children with these callous traits at extremes is that it's done deliberately, deliberately hurting the younger baby in the family or doing cruel acts to pets. And then when the parents try to talk to them about why that's wrong, it's kind of staring at someone you realise doesn't care. And that moment when an adult sees a child who seems not to really be connected to the pain of another person is a scary moment. Go, go, go. Even so, Professor Dad's team was confident their powerful training program could change these kids. We were kind of touring the country going, we can treat kids even with callous and emotional traits. And when we looked at the data, we were kind of a bit horrified. The treatment didn't really work, which begged the question, why not? Back here in London is a scientist who may just have the answer. In a world first, Dr Essie Viding has been imaging the brains of children with callous, unemotional traits. So here we are focusing on a brain area called amygdala. 
The amygdala is the part of the brain that processes fear and negative emotions. We showed children pictures of other people in emotionally distressing situations. Typically developing children have a strong amygdala response to other people's distress. Children who have high levels of callous and emotional traits show no discernible amygdala response to other people in distressing situations. So when I'm watching a film, if the character cries, I'll often cry. I guess that's my amygdala resonating. Would these kids or the psychopaths, would, nothing? Would not be bothered. Nothing? Nothing. No wonder they're different. Yes. This is the first time such a study has been done in kids so young, but it reflects many other studies done on adult psychopaths. And these findings are changing researchers' perception and definition of psychopathy. Many now believe it is an under-arousal of the amygdala. So most of us learn to care about how other people feel by seeing the emotion and the fear in other people. And then that causes our own discomfort. So if you don't feel discomfort or fear yourself, or you don't notice it in other people, you're highly unlikely to develop the higher order human functions of empathy and moral conscience. And to be clear, this is a very different empathy disorder to autism spectrum. I think of it this way. Empathy has two parts, feeling and understanding. Now, with autism, you resonate with other people's emotions, you just don't understand them. With psychopathy, you understand other people's emotions, you just never feel them. So that's one of the reasons why psychopaths make very good persuaders and very good manipulators. The under-aroused amygdala theory would also help explain why Professor Dad's parenting intervention did not really work with the callous, unemotional kids. The thing we found was that they were not at all perturbed by the time out, the discipline strategy. These kids just seemed to be completely unmoved by it, came back, did the same sort of misbehaviour again. So that's very consistent with the idea that these callous, unemotional or cold traits are associated with punishment insensitivity. These kids are very reward driven, but they don't care about being chastised. Martin Bryan, as people will recall, was one of Australia's worst mass murderers. Martin, what happened to you? There's an extraordinary video about Martin Bryant when he was a little boy. I had this coloured sky rocking and I wanted to see if the wick went quick, so I lit it. I believe he'd set fire to something and had actually hurt himself. And they were interviewing him on local TV and they said, well, you'll never do that again, will you? Expecting him to say, oh, no, no, I was burned. And he looked at them and said, yes. Don't you think you've learned a lesson from this? Yes, but I'm still playing with it. Very, very interesting. Classic example of that fearlessness or insensitivity to punishment, where for most of us, you do something, something yucky happens, you learn not to do it again. And the million dollar question, is it hereditary? In kids with callous unemotional traits, the evidence is that it's more genetic. So it runs in families? So it probably runs in families. So now what? Okay, so put yourself in this situation. You're a mother with regular empathy and you have a kid who's showing high signs of callous unemotional. Is there anything you can do? I mean, it's not like you can cut and run. Go up to your son. Yep. Well, despite his earlier setback, Mark Dads is optimistic. And the reason is this experiment, which sent a storm through psychopathy science when it was published last year. In this reenactment, the mother has been asked to look her child in the eye and show love. 
Look what the child does. We love you so much. Sure enough, the young kids with conduct problems and callous unemotional traits rarely looked their parents in the eyes. Why does that excite you? Well, we think that eye contact is one of the critical early human behaviours that turns on those emotional parts of the brain. And if he can train the young kids to look at their parents, can he change their very development? What would you like to do, Toby? Alongside modified versions of their parenting program, that's what they're working on now. I love you. Are you sure you won't just train them to be better manipulators earlier? There's a, there's a folklore in the area of adult psychopathy, which is if you train them in empathy or any kind of skills, they'll just use what you've trained them in to further their kind of badass tendencies and become better, more effective psychopaths. I don't think that there's any chance of that happening with children. We wouldn't be just giving them verbal skills that they could use to manipulate. We hope that we will fundamentally change the development of the neural systems associated with emotion and empathy. You hope. We hope. <laughs> Watch this space, I guess. Watch this space, yeah. And if Kevin Dutton is to be believed, just slightly turning down the dial of psychopathy traits could mean the difference between a criminal career and a high-flying one. The family psychopath may yet make you proud. <laughs>